Well, presenters, welcome back. Thinking basketball, hacking the dribble. This is an on-ball attack, where the focal point of the play is dribbling while attacking the defense. This is an off-ball attack, where the focal point is away from the ball and not dribbling while attacking the defense. And this is a play that looks like it's on-ball, but is also kind of off-ball, but then maybe becomes on-ball again, and it's awesome and difficult to defend, and it's been slowly taking over the entire league. Dribbling is almost the oldest tactic in the book, but after James Naismith invented the game in 1891, it took about 20 years before players could freely dribble around like we know today. And even Dang, after that, jump shot. Hackers, before players could freely dribble around like we know today. <laughs> Tell me you need to use legs to shoot. In the 60s, there's proof. I've said it a million times. Arms are for aim. Arms are way more important for shooting than today. legs. And even after that, passing and cutting was all the rage. As the game modern, even after that, new. passing and cutting was or X action. all the rage. As the game modernized, dribbling became a critical offensive skill for players, so much so that today we take it for granted when players weave a knife all over the court with a live dribble. Oh, uh, I said dribbling is the most useless skill in basketball plenty of times. Um, dribbling is um, very, very nice to have. It's not necessary. Most great scorers historically use their dribble. Chris Paul's not a great scorer. Dribble to get to their spots and attack defenses with the ball. And today that often involves the pick and roll game where they can score or pass so effectively. That has revitalized the dribble. You guys, you guys need to think of this game more like football than basketball. I've said it a million times now, um, especially if you've been following me for a while. <laughs> it's easier to get open off the ball than on the ball. The world has transitioned to a lot of dribbling because of James Harden and uh, and one and um, Allen Iverson. But it's so much easier to get open off the ball than on the ball. Think of football players. Um, you have running quarterbacks. Running quarterbacks, Michael Vick, uh, Lamar Jackson, um, some of these really, really talented athletes that can pass and run the ball. That's like someone who can dribble very, very well. Okay, but the best quarterbacks ever, Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, Peyton Manning, like these guys, they just stood there and threw it. Okay, most of the times you should just be standing there and throwing it. You shouldn't have to uh, scramble and then figure out what to do. Okay, you scramble with a purpose, you dribble with a purpose. Handoff game where the handoff acts you do things like with a, a purpose screen, when you know what you're trying to do. Same pick and roll reads you don't have to do a bunch of useless dribbles. Corner. And dribble handoffs are dangerous that simple. because players run into them without the ball. So it's almost like a head start on what would be a pick and roll game. And the next level to that is actually starting with the dribble. And instead of going into pick and roll, passing it and then chasing after that pass to get it back and go to work. I've heard a number of terms for this. But what's really happening Get here snap, chase, is that the traditional back. pick and roll step of dribbling off Different a screen is being Sometimes replaced by a pistol. brief off ball moment that's better than dribbling for most players. And so, and, and so if you start just watching these uh, highlights a little bit closer, like you don't need all the between the leg dribbles, you don't need the behind the backs, you don't need all the hezzies, because if you run it very sharp and very crisp, you don't need it. Better take this hand off. Dribble. Okay, this is a push cross. Dribbling for okay, most that's a regular players. cross. Take I mean, this pick and roll dribble. from Michael Porter Jr. He's not and a great ball dribble. handler, Floating so hands. he's swallowed up around the screen and almost turns it over. But here he doesn't dribble into the pick. He passes it and then attacks without the ball. And that dribble little release. change of direction is easier without dribbling. So he can run his man right into the screen then restart the dribble with momentum to get to the basket. Jamal so Murray is basically setting up dribble. his defender for a pick here, but without the ball, he can walk him into the screen, then get back to dribbling like it's a pick and roll. Now, you might be thinking, isn't passing and chasing it just a dribble handoff? And this point of confusion here, right? They have to decide what's gonna go on. People, you have two versus two. You have to make decisions, and uh, this <coughs> this dribble handoff or dribble chase or get action, 
you have to have players that can think and they have to have a synergy and a cooperation a chemistry together it is but there's more going on than just a classic handoff flowing into the pick and roll actions instead of dribbling into the screen here Tyrese Maxey freezes his defender by passing and chasing it for a wide open look because that brief transition from being on ball to if you can catch the ball you're open I talk about free food if you can catch it you're off open. ball relaxes the defender for a second as he processes the pass and that doesn't happen if he dribbles the whole time so the shift from dribbling to passing asks a little bit more of the on-ball defender than if the dribbler ran a traditional pick and roll the whole way. Shingu. And it asks more of the second defender involved in the action where the speed and direction can be difficult to handle. Miles Turner gets slightly out of position on the pass and Maxi's moving so fast that it's too late to recover. Here's another one where Cade Cunningham throws it and chases it and that just completely gashes the Bulls defense because he's sprinting after the ball. So when his defender calls for a switch, it's just way too fast and a red carpet to the rim. Here's the thing. Defenses are armed and ready with tons of coverages against a traditional pick and roll setup. DeAndre Hunter's in position here. So the ball handler gives it up, but this pass confuses those coverages. Hunter is about to come meet the ball, but he's completely frozen by the pass, and the result is a busted coverage and an open three. This throw it and chase it move can even Jedi mind trick defenders into leaving Steph Curry open, because when this is a pick and roll with Curry dribbling, every Kings defender knows to meet him at the screen and then to absolutely not leave him outside the three point arc. But when he passes it to the screener instead, that defender has to briefly worry about the ball and suddenly all that prep flies out the window. And that brings us back to this play where Harrison Barnes is- So if we're going back to football, think about the uh, the last play of a Hail Mary or something like that when, when they're down by six and they need a touchdown, you see all the laterals. Um, it's basically like that. Every, the person who has the ball has to be guarded, but then every player has to make a decision whether to guard the ball or the guy that they think they're about to lateral the ball to. So when you give it to Draymond or whoever you give it to, Sag they have to worry about him dribbling for a little bit. Draymond Green. And when Curry passes it, Barnes starts thinking about Draymond dribbling. Or maybe he doesn't realize Kevin Herter's disconnected from Curry. Either way, this doesn't happen if Steph dribbles the entire time and it turns into a layup. So in these situations, the second defender really needs to lock in like it's a pick and roll, and then the screener can just keep it and drive himself. This is yet another layer to pausing the dribble in a would-be pick and roll. You can't really trap the just ball handler because execute. the screener is the one who has the ball. In the normal pick and roll setup, the dribbler has to pass it to the roll man out of the trap. And that's not always easy, but because the pass and chase Lazy briefly pass. moves the screener Lazy. on ball, he already has possession and can just drive himself. So even though there's just a brief- already has Draymond has to wait for the, the split second that Kleba and uh, Luca come together to make a decision. Possession. He notices Kleba's out of position right away, Draymond attacks right away. And can just drive himself. So even though there's just a brief space without dribbling, Defense this pass like makes impossible. traditional traps nearly impossible because of that keep option. That second defender can't leave his man as easily, even on a play like this. If Jeff Green Composite dribbles society. around this pick, the defender would move into his path. But he's thinking, I'm not leaving Jokic, and suddenly it's a layup. That means a skilled big man makes this play more dangerous than if he just set the pick and rolled to the rim. Basically, he's being given more responsibility to read the play and make the right decision. So the more skilled that big man is, the it's more difficult this man. entire thing is to guard. The Spurs used to love this version where a guard would throw it at Tim Duncan cut right at him and that was enough to lose the defender for a layup 
They could also move Duncan to the low post and then chase the entry pass for a handoff and finish. And teams have been cutting at the post up like this for years. The Lakers did it with Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. How tight those windows are. And Coach Alex Hannum loved it back in the 60s with Wilt Chamberlain handing it off. So these ideas have been around for decades, which makes sense because dribbling was much harder in the earlier days of the league. So manipulating defenders in the pick and roll with hesitation dribbles wasn't much of a thing. Instead, this pass and chase was blended into a game of handoffs and backdoor cuts. And it was even built into part of the legendary triangle offense, which was popularized by Phil Jackson during the Bulls championship years. Although that pass and chase wasn't interrupting a dribble or mimicking a pick and roll. Whereas Mike D'Antoni's hurry up offense had a built in pass and chase option instead of dribbling around the screen every time. The whole league adopted that play after the success of those Suns teams. And we actually saw it a minute ago with Kate Cunningham. So the concept of passing and chasing it has been around for decades, starting as a way to attack without any dribbling, turning into a way to get into a dribble on the move and ultimately evolving to pause the dribble in the middle of a pick and roll style attack. It can also be used to restart a dribble after the first attack stalls, rebooting the two man game here for a little floater. If people watch this and um, they can't understand basketball, I mean, this this guy does a great job of explaining it. Um, I hope you guys are learning a lot, but um knowledge is one thing you have to be able to execute um it all comes down to execution even if it it gets all messed up if the ball goes in it counts as execution so once the you have to be in the process of making all of these decisions guard picks once you make the right decision or whatever decision you make you still have to have the skill to put the ball in the hoop the dribble so it takes a long time it takes chemistry between players it takes a knowledge of player skills that big man to run these types of offenses to continue taxing the original defender it's much easier and that just means you can up individually to get work the on your one-on-one feet, moves all the then time chase it while the defender's recovering and just get really really good at one-on-one isolation. On defenses who have already taken away the initial action tyler hero tries to work the pick and roll here about two or three different ways they're all stopped so he snaps it and chases it and that's too fast to handle for dallas and turns into a layup Basically, a player can get the advantage of up faking to shed his man, then reboot the dribble or cut into greener pastures. This is the cousin of the relocation three, where a drive is contained by the defense and the ball handler gives it up to run to open space at the three point Damn, line. Exit screen. In a similar vein, the dribbler doesn't have to follow the pass if there's open space to run into. And these are all similar ways to start a possession on ball and the dribble, and then just keep going again. Some of the best pass and chase options feature a back door cut, which is really just punishment. Even some of the best pass and chase options feature a back door cut, which is really just punishing the defenders for denying that hand back option in the first place. Teams can even blend this in with other actions, like Curry starting in pick and roll here, then whipping it to the roller, only to chase after it for an open look. And that's way more effective than a crossover dribble here because it confuses Curry's man and the big man at the same time. Hmm. This is the exact same ninjutsu Curry and Green busted out in 2019 to close out the Houston Rockets, where they kept running pick and roll only to add the hand back at the end, and that just unplugs Chris Paul's controller and put the punctuation mark on the series. And this is why I love this concept. It's a perfect marriage between the on-ball and off-ball parts of the game. In one moment, you unleash the power of off-ball movement that we've discussed before. And that happens during the on-ball sequence of the pick and roll action, which itself has evolved into one of the most indefensible plays in the entire sport. And since you can restart the dribble from any angle like this, 
the pass and chase presents a nearly unlimited set of options, while unlocking the brilliance of a second teammate, which is why it's so powerful for basketball's most well-rounded offensive players. And remember, the whole thing is based on an unlimited ability to pause and restart the dribble, which in a way makes it the ultimate dribbling cheat code. We have videos covering the evolution of the pick and roll and off ball movement that directly relate to this. If more people play like this, it would be very, very difficult to uh, guard. Um, this It's just not the way American basketball is currently played right now. You don't have enough players um, that are capable of making all these reads and, and the energy to make all of these cuts and uh, stay focused enough to actually do all the right things. At the higher levels, um, eventually you might get there when there's some kind of uh, kind of continuity. Um, but at the younger levels, it's still too much, um, lots of dribbling. And uh, people think that it's mostly about dribbling and one-on-one -on -one scoring. It's a team game, man. Once you unlock that team game, a, a great team can beat um, sometimes one, sometimes two really, really high-end talents. Um, <clears throat> but once you get at the higher, higher levels, um, you got to just make everything a little bit sharper because the talent just gets greater and greater. Um, I hope you guys learned something. I don't know if I learned anything much other than uh, he knows how to put together a really, really good video. Until next time, take 14 minutes, 24 seconds, or 1% of your day to get better. Peace.